never understand the spiritual truth. You only understood it via the natural, the physical. Oh, Jesus, and who is born of the spirit is of the spirit. But he is born of the flesh is flesh, but he is born of the spirit is spirit. So Jesus introduced the gospel to Nicodemus. And we know the story that Nicodemus became a disciple of Jesus. Well, secret disciple. But he was born again. And we know that at the end of Jesus' road on his life on this earth, Nicodemus was one of those who really took care of his body in his burial, right? With Joseph of Arimathea. So that reveals to us that Nicodemus was really born again. Okay. How about Zacchaeus? Luke chapter 19. That's an example of Jesus being a soul winner. One on one. Sometimes it's good for preachers. They're really good preachers to the crowd. And people say, oh, I only want to preach to the crowd. I don't like to speak to individuals. Jesus said that only to the crowd that you preach. You've got to be good on one on one witness. As a matter of fact, one on one witness is the most effective method of all. The most effective way of winning people to Christ is one on one. I tell you. What happened to Zacchaeus? You know the story. Luke chapter 19. From <clears throat> Jerusalem going down to Jericho. We call that the Jericho Road. If you go to Jerusalem, experience you tour in Israel, one of the spots is Jericho. I was there twice. Yeah? And it's really good going down here because Jerusalem was high, you know, and then going down. Right to the crowds. We're out the Lord Jesus Christ. And Zacchaeus, you know the story. As the song in the Sunday school uh, for kids, you know, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed upon the sycamore tree for the, the Lord they cannot see, right? That's the song. <laughs> in the uh, nursery, nursery song. And you know what? So he was run ahead in order to see. But who, what was his occupation? He was a publican. So he was a publican, a tax collector. Maybe he was the head of the BIR, Bureau of Internal Religio, you know, at the time. BIR, BIR in the Philippines. <laughs> BIR, tax collector. Would not see the Lord Jesus Christ because of the crowds, because he was short. So what he did, he ran ahead of them and climbed the sycamore tree. And right there at the branch of the sycamore tree where Jesus would pass, that's where the street was. And that sycamore was just up. Jesus Christ stopped. They never had an encounter before. Jesus Christ never had time with him, nor Zacchaeus before. How in the world that amidst all of the hustle and bustle of the crowds, Jesus stopped with all of the people touching him and the sounds and the signs. But Jesus stopped and looked up. And then he said, Zacchaeus, Jesus called him. By his first name, and some chaos was maybe he almost fell off the branch. <laughs> he could not believe that Jesus recognized him, called him by his first name. Don't you know that your name is the sweetest name in the world? When somebody calls you, your name. Wow. And that was tremendous. That touched the heart of Zacchaeus. And Jesus said, And the crowds were whispering, Who is he? Jesus Christ. How come that he is calling? Doesn't he know that Zacchaeus is a thief? Zacchaeus is a tax collector because his tax collector had a very bad name at the time. During those times. Maybe even today. 
in some, you know, most, maybe most, even today. But Jesus Christ took time. Zacchaeus, come down. For today, I'm going to your house. Who? Not only to see Jesus, but Jesus, the rabbi, the miracle worker. Set an appointment to be in my house. That would be a tremendous, significant privilege for you. Okay? And you're very sorry. In the house, Jesus talked more about himself, about the scriptures, I believe. And then the story ends with a very sweet melodious note. Zacchaeus was saying, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He also, Jesus said, is the Son of Abraham. He is a sinner, yes, but he repented from his sins and he believes in me as the Messiah. So he received it from One only one. Not only mass evangelism, but personal evangelism. I hope that this will encourage you. Because if we don't, if we continue to remain with the 9% of those who don't witness, there is no future. There is no prospect for our church to grow. Instead, our church will what? Will, will die and die ever as a local church. The church never dies, but what I mean, the community, the local church will die, will close down. God will transfer it somewhere else. Believe me. Show me a church that doesn't win souls, and I will show a church that is dying and that will close down. But if you show me a church that members win souls and witness one on one, that church will be vibrant. That church will be healthy. That church will be growing. That's what it is. So, you and I must win souls. Because Jesus commands it. Second, Jesus exemplifies it. Number three reason. Because of the reality of hell. You and I should witness. Because people who haven't accepted Jesus and who haven't been witnessed with, and even witnessed with, but be rejected, will go to hell. The Bible warns us, if you read the Gospels, if you read the Gospels, there are more warnings about hell by the Lord Jesus Christ than his teaching about heaven. Believe me, the Bible talks more in warning ways about hell than about hell. Many people say, oh hell, that is pananakop lang. I heard people who like that, you know. When I was going in one place, they said, oh, when I preached, they said, oh, about hell. He said, oh, nananakop ka naman. It's not pananako. Hell is a reality. You know why? If there were no hell, Jesus wouldn't have come and died at the cross of God. Why did he come? Why did he leave the glory of heaven and suffer through the Via Dolorosa and all of the sufferings by crucifixion in the cross of power. Why? Because of the reality of hell. The Bible talks about it. Hell. The Apostle Paul, as a matter of fact, warns us about hell. Very, very clear. If you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body, but not 